Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today on our uh, free class. Today we have a combination of class drawing, which is the full moon and labyrinth. And also with a prayer, you can use a prayer or meditation exercise with the labyrinth. Introduction about this specific day. Uh, as many of you are aware, it's a super moon. We have a full moon coming on the 13th, depending on the 13th of July. It's one of the brightest and biggest moons of the year. And that makes our, our more emotional, makes us more uh, maybe vulnerable. And as you know, like having a full moon, it's like a cl climax or something, like a completion. And the moon reaches its highest point, it's a highest, like, size and then it starts declining again and it's a cycle continues and specifically this uh, full moon is for women because we we react very sensitive and uh, the moon is associated with feminine energy is as associated with the moon so we women are probably particularly vulnerable uh, for example i had a very strong headache yesterday and it can trigger headache, can uh, trigger uh, sleep disturbance. Yeah, here's a, well, you, many of you experience. There's something, emotions, so please be careful, a uh, feeling of not being able to advance, and that's what we're going to talk about today, what to do if we're feeling stuck. It may be not necessarily on the full moon day, but also on a, any other day. So even if it's full moon, this specific class, we use this event, but uh, this class, this technique can be used in any day, any time you feel you want a little bit of something new. Yeah. About something new, actually, uh, full moon is we think about of letting something go, because only by, if we want to invite something new in our life, we need to let something go, typically. And if we let something go, like make sure that we invite something in because empty space, and we will try to, nature doesn't like emptiness, and we'll try to feel something else. So if you letting go of, of a bad habit, or if you want to change habit, make sure that you invite something in, instead of that. So with this, we can start our drawing. So we have a veterans of neurographic art here, but also those who joined us the first time. I show that the very simple markers, I use this is a little bit more artistic, but these are just uh, our dollar store, this inexpensive store. And the same with the pencils that I'm using. Yeah, simple pencils, not professional grade, and even I, I used a, my paper, is a printer, from printer paper. So nothing, nothing, nothing fancy, non, nothing expensive. And your quality of your drawing and the effect of neurographic, uh, and the effect of neurographic art doesn't depend on the quality of materials. You can use any material. Just most importantly that you know how to use the line the principle of rounding and uh, the principle of interconnectedness. And that's for those who joined us the very first time, I briefly explain what I mean by those elements. One of the main elements is the neurographic line. I make it shorter. And we shorten it's the neurographic line. It's not exactly like free form in intuitive line, but the line by definition, it doesn't repeat itself. And we draw it where we do not expect to see it. If you know that there are no straight lines in nature and nature doesn't repeat itself. It resembles there are certain patterns, they look almost the same in our to our eyes but if you look 
they're not the same. Like there are no two the same blades of grass, no the same leaf. So, and that we're using the neurographic line in May, like those waves repeat itself, but they're not the same. So how to draw it? Just make sure at the very beginning, when you look what you're drawing, just concentrate on the tip of your marker or pencil if you're drawing with a pencil pen. And make sure that you do not repeat the line. So it doesn't create a pattern. And pattern, I mean, it's something that could be reproduced easily and known in advance. That's what we relate uh, uh, to psychology that neurographic art, neuro art and neurographic are based on. So if you use a straight line, it's pretty obvious. Uh, these segments, almost the same. But if we look at the neurographic line, they are not the same. So at the beginning, please remember that. So, and if you want to convert the, uh, the simple line, straight line, into the neurographic line, just move your hand sli slightly. You slight micro movement with the hand. The movement actually, this exercise is very beneficial for the brain development. Something like this. And uh, this line, the blue line, converts any line, any straight line, into the neurographic line. You may also wonder about pattern. And I know that some of you use Zintangle, which is a beautiful combination, but uh, the, the patterns repeat themselves. So like for example, uh, this cannot be considered the neurographic line because the, the elements are the same and the mind can predict and when they're trying not to let this mind to predict. So we're taking it by surprise. And this taking the mind by surprise, preventing it being in control, we can initiate changes and positive, I mean positive changes in our life. That, uh, that's one of the uh, basic principles. Another one, of course, we, many of you have seen on principle of rounding. That's, for example, the line. And when the two lines are more cross, we do such a shape, like U, almost like letter U, and uh, create, so just soften this intersection. So there are two reasons of them. One is, as I mentioned, is to soften it. There is a psychological reason why we do that. I will not be able to explain it, but this also indicates a connection between the lines. And it's very important when we're drawing the neurographic art, neurographica, and neuro art. So the, all these uh, three categories share the same visual elements. And also I mentioned the third one is interconnectedness. So that, if, for example, if we have elements like a, shapes like this, they are connected with the line. So the line, the neurographic line is the element itself. It's the, in the neurographic drawings but it also serves as connection, connecting the elements. I like uh, comparing the neurographic line with the line of consciousness. If you know like space, what connects us? What connects everything in, in our world that we know it? Space, the two elements that seem completely separate, but they're actually connected with the space around them. So in this, in this case, the neurographic line in our drawings serves as the element of uh, this con connecting the elements. So we use 
the line to connect various elements. So that's the main, main principles of neurographic art, as we will share, and also neuro art. Also, another uh, element I would like to mention is a theme or intent. Intent or question behind every drawing. We just do not draw just for art for art's sake, but we're also in trying to indicate the meaning behind each drawing. That's our, so we're trying to, well, to ask a question or solve an issue. So typically, neurographic art shares the same element as having a theme or intent behind every drawing. So please prepare your, your paper. Good question about the thickness of the line. Um, uh, thickness of the line can, uh, depends on your, of course, uh, tool that I, I, we're using. At the beginning, we suggest using a marker. Like, like it produces nice, strong line, like easy to manage. Especially when we do rounding, it's it's easy to draw. So if you if I need to strengthen the line, then I, I can draw. There are some elements that we can draw wider lines, but there's a special line. Uh, tools like fine liner can be used, but I suggest for more advanced drawings, more detailed drawing. Not at the beginning because it's not as easy to draw with rounding. So some certain skills they have to be developed. And so the thickness of the lines is produced by the tool that you're using. So normally I use some um, just markers. Oh, the brush, look. It's a little bit wider. And also the thickness of the line depends on the size of your drawing. A smaller drawing, the thinner the line, the, the larger drawing you can do uh, wider lines. The theme of this class, so if we uh, think of something that whether you would like to solve something or whether you would like to let go. So one of them is up to you what you, I have the element, I, uh, for example, I would like to make a decision about something and that will be, my theme would be making decision. They help me get unstuck making decisions. You can position your page like horizontally or vertically. Because I'm using the camera, um, it's easy for me in this uh, landscape format. So I will start with drawing the lines, the neurographic line which indicate just the flow of life. You can draw the line in any direction. Like I start from the bottom up. I will draw just random a few lines. Those again, they can uh, cross. If you have any thoughts coming, just let them come and let them go. Do not focus on any thoughts. And suddenly I feel like I realize that that's part indicates that no matter how I'm 
I try, I cannot move forward. That's something that thought, that persistent thought keeps me in the same spot. And I just come again and I, and I run almost in circles. Okay, the question was why I use a blue marker. You can use any marker you feel like, any specific color. I felt maybe, maybe because of the moon, maybe because of thinking about night and I decided to use blue color. I just felt like using blue. Uh, yes, I, I suggested this is the beginning of the drawing, like a spiral first. If you would like to follow this format. So what can I do if I feel like my life is like in circles, almost like a spiral, and I can't move anywhere. Uh, the best way is probably to distance oneself a little bit. Look again, if possible, to find a space and start following it back. So we were drawing the double spiral labyrinths. And I move in direction. So these two spirals create a double spiral labyrinth. Here it is again. Okay, so I will outline with a wider marker to show in my the labyrinth. Uh, the lines that belong to the labyrinth. So if you're not familiar specifically with labyrinths, labyrinths are not made, they use for meditation, for healing, for, for prayer, for answering questions. And they have one uh, path that no blind, al um, blind alleys, no turns, just one path that is possible to follow without any ability, without any danger of being lost. So the labyrinths, and they are much more used nowadays this is resurgence of labyrinths. And here with a, I connect, I use my lines because they're still connected in one drawing. And I use the element of rounding to connecting my lines. Lines are connected to the labyrinth, so they all belong together and form one one connected element in my drawing. So if you see me drawing like double lines, the triple lines, that's mostly related to my style. It has also another meaning, but I will explain it right now, it's my style.
feel like I can draw more lines. So when we connect it, uh, so we have such a shape. We can also use this, uh, the labyrinth that we created for working with our marker and asking a question or trying to solve our issue or intent, or you can use a prayer. And prayer, I was also thinking if you're familiar with you, you can use the prayer upon upon a prayer or saying with it was shortened is if you're familiar it's re repeated the words i'm sorry please forgive me i love you thank you you can even so with this kind of labyrinth you can even write a prayer or some saying inside of it so this is for the future, but I would like us uh, to try our library now and walk together if you, if you like. So if you feel like there's no pressure, if you feel like continue drawing, that's okay. So if you, but if you would like to experience the power of the labyrinth, the strength, you can prepare. I will use one of the, just not, not the marker, but the pencil, a lighter color, just to, you can uh, trace your path, like you're walking with your finger, but I, I prefer a pencil because it's easy to see. And I, Okay, so to walk the labyrinth, we need to gather our like, energy. So make sure that you relax and almost like grounding yourself. A uh, question, yes. Can we walk if we are not finished rounding? Yes, I think we can. Because we can also uh, use colors apply colors and so rounding could be done in this drawing it doesn't matter so much when we we can do finish rounding later because this drawing contains no conflict hope not and also when the class it takes longer to round to so, so I have to shorten the class time So there was one uh, entrance, one entrance on one side and exit to another. And the opposite will just follow the path. Okay, so just uh, let's do a short uh, grounding exercise. Is a uh, sit straight, you know, uncross your feet and I just will put them, you, the sole of your feet on the, on the ground.
Observe your breathing. You may try to move your energy from the head to lower your body around the belly. Please recall your theme, intention, your theme or intention. And walk and enter the labyrinth. The line could be straight, wavy, or neurographic line. Let me pause a little bit in the center. And continue. Hope you had a, it's a, a good experience. It's very calming exercise. I feel overall just calm. I do. I don't. I don't think I received any specific answer, but I felt more relaxed. I would say like lighter, overall lighter. Yeah, yeah it's a feeling of peace. Like uh, it's a good expression. Yes, I I feel more peaceful now. Mm -hmm. So, and from now, this is the structure of our drawing, the basic structure. If you want to continue, you may, uh, there are other elements. So it's possible to add more lines. I feel like I need more lines. It's possible, so we'll, of course, I will add colors. Just use your intuition, use your personal uh, personal taste, how you would like to have your labyrinths colored, no specific requirements. Yes, if anybody, if you would like to feel like adding more figures that symbolize something are gonna around, so think about it, uh, that this labyrinth that represents you, your idea, your issue, and what would you would like to have around you, surround you. Uh, circles are always good. They represent uh, energy, and a source of energy, but also harmonizing. So here it's mostly, this is circular structure here. You may add as well circles. It's a good idea. I think I feel like a, I would like to add more circles. I need a little bit more energy today after my headache. Of course, they're random, but I I look where just when I feel when I would like to position my circle. Okay, uh, it's a good question about while walking the labyrinth, should I actually draw lines or simulate walking with a pencil? It's up to you. So if you, uh, the pencil or marker will draw the line. If you do not want to draw the line, you can just 
hold it like this uh, without touching the pen and the paper. It's the same idea as the, the finger labyrinths. Or you can draw uh, like a uh, light lines. And of course, when I draw circles, I also need to around every time I see lines cross the circle, it creates more opportunities to round to harmonize something. Those uh, rounding, the harmonizing elements. I don't remember I felt so much well attracted by drawing circles. You do not yes, you do not need to copy me. That's uh, my feeling. If you feel like drawing circles, it's up to you. If you do not feel like drawing circles, you want other figures, it's also you can free to create. So maybe I need more energy in this full moon, so I like drawing more circles. But the main figure remains this labyrinth. So that's why I used a wider line to emphasize this, um, the labyrinth, the wall of the labyrinth. So this is the main figure. So that's why I use a wider marker. So if, if you know that that's an extra knowledge from Neurographica, uh, the width of the line on the same drawing, it shows a difference on importance. A uh, thin line is something like background, and are not less important. And the wider the line, the more importance it, it it indicates like more important because it's more visible, it's stronger, more powerful, it demands attention. So that was a question about the line thickness. And I connect my library. So I'll probably do uh, uh, draw more rounding later. So I will just now. I'd like to add some colors. There's a reason why we uh, use uh, pencil in neurographic uh, in neurographic art. If you you feel free to use other. If if you want to use paint, it's not restricted to neurographic, I will explain. May some, we have questions why we use uh, pencils in, in neurographic. But in this class, you are not restricted specifically to pencils. Yellow is always so indication of light. So probably I will add more blue. So the blue is probably close to having if you are familiar with the chakra system, uh, blue is the throat chakra, the Shuddha chakra that is responsible for self-expression, for creativity as well. Let's 
Uh, okay, good, good question. In the libraries, I feel tempted to uh, emphasize line going up. Is that a solution from being stuck? Yeah, it could be good, good interpretation. Also, I'm thinking I'm going to write, uh, just writing uh, the prayer that I mentioned about Panapara. So we'll. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's not really convenient, so I have to write in this direction. From right, from right to left. I'll use them. Um, of course, if writing, there's another one, how you can, if you want something to you remember, something to be specifically imprinted in your memory, writing is one of the best exercises. And I will continue, use, I use this almost like neurographic line, I will not make, space between the words, I will just continue write, writing. I am sorry, please forgive me. It's like, like labyrinth itself, not enough. I love you. You and thank you. And then I will continue this all the way in the labyrinth as, as many times as you, if you, you feel I will continue writing like this and then an out. So we'll be continuing uh, prayer. Uh, okay, so that was a question from uh, to more like from Neurographica. If part of the resolution is taking action, would adding a triangle somewhere be appropriate? Yes. If you're familiar with these elements, you can add any elements you, you feel comfortable and necessary for your drawing. I feel like uh, I, the circles, I, I, I'm glad I included circles because Drawing circles can also bring more power. And I, I felt like I, I needed one. I will add circles. Yeah, that's really interesting. It feels very interesting. The more circles I add, the better I'm feeling. So, this means it's a new experience. Plenty of rounding to do on this, I feel like on this drawing. Uh, 
Uh, info about triangle symbol. Uh, okay, so there was a question about in info about the triangle symbol. See that in a that's for more advanced uh, uh, courses and specifically in neurographica. The circle and the line are very safe to use, but the triangle may provoke and more stronger feelings, and they indicate could indicate a change in action. So if you're completely new, I would suggest not using triangles, meaning. Okay, another question. Do the circle need to touch other lines or the free flow? Yes, of that what we specifically for neurographica, yes. They need to touch the line so they cannot float on their own. Uh, I started drawing and uh, I'm attaching them to the line. But if you, for example, if you draw a circle on its own, it has to be connected to the entire drawing. So, and I, in, this, in this case, I will draw another line and attach it. And the line could go, extend through the circle, it's not only embrace the circle, but also extend through it. Yes, yeah, so there's very powerful writing in the labyrinth. It, it's an excellent way, like we combine the power of the labyrinth and the power of a written word. A little bit of time. So I'll continue my second. Uh, this uh, second round of my prayer. So I'm sorry. So in this case, when as I'm writing, I'm just using the neurographic line as a part of my, my writing. Oh, okay, question. How I continue writing when I reach the center? I will just continue it. Thank you. Uh, because it continues, unlike other labyrinths, when it has a stop point right back, this one continues. Thank you. So I will finish this. This is a third. So sorry. Oh, yep, yeah, and it continues. Sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. Yeah, and then I will just continue the exit. So this library is very good for writing because it continues rather than some other kind of libraries that they have point or stop point in the middle when you have to turn 180 degrees and go back.
Somewhere my pencils are almost uh, finished. And I like it because it's such a um, bright color. Maybe finish my writing. Thank you. Sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. I'm not sure whether I can have enough room for my one more set. So you please forgive me. composition is almost finished so now you can continue working on rounding making nice neat drawing with uh, drawing the lines rounding connection connecting connecting the elements writing, adding colors. So if you're familiar with Neurographica, you may add uh, other elements. So, uh, such as uh, field lines, those who know, but if you don't know, uh, the most important we've done uh, all the elements.
So we're almost uh, finishing the class. We're not going to add any elements and from now on, from this point, that's your own creativity, so you you may finish the drawing the way you feel like. It's probably you, those who know neurographic. I use this technique, neurocalligraphy, when on neuro writing, when I, I included this writing as part of my neurographic line and drawing. So I connect it, it becomes part of the drawing. So this. And that's why I'm connecting it to other lines and treating the line, this line writing with a shaped neurographic line and it becomes part of the drawing. And of course, the prayer, as, a, as I am outlining it again, I am repeating it. And it's not only pronounce it, but also I help in my hand and forms these letters corresponding to their meaning. I knew about this uh, uh, method, upon uh, upon, but I and it's the first time I'm using it uh, in my drawing, or oh, at all. So if you're interested in it more, I I, ha I, I can suggest a link to Dr. Joe Vitale's book.
So, yeah, so thank you, Alicia. So about the Sopanapana uh, practicing. I haven't, yeah, I haven't practiced it um, myself and I would like to include it. So I was reading about it, listening, and then planning to include it. Mm -hmm. So you're welcome if you like it. You're welcome to include in your drawing or even if you think about any other saying and prayer, it will be also uh, useful to include it. So with this, we will probably, our drawing part of the class is over. So you can continue from now on. You can continue on, on your own. You're welcome to post on your social media, anywhere you, you know, Instagram or Facebook, please share your drawings. Thank you so much. And I wish everyone a very nice week and until next time.